Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 17.1 beta 2 and iOS 17.0.3 have been out for a few days. There's even more to talk about as far as bug fixes in 17.0.3 and more new features with iOS 17.1 beta 2 that have been found since the iOS 17.1 beta 2 is out what's new video. We'll talk about that and also talk about the overall experience if it fixed the overheat issue with the iPhone 15s and also talk about what you had to say based off the YouTube community poll where at the time of this video, there's over 30,000 votes and hundreds and hundreds of comments, 308 comments. I've read all of those to decide what the overall experience is like for most of you. So we'll take a look at some of your comments toward the end of the video. Now, the first thing I wanted to mention though, is a little bit of news where Apple released some new FF SF symbols or San Francisco symbols five. It says with over 5,000 symbols. And in this update, there's over 700. I'll link this in the description, but you do need to be a developer to use these symbols, but basically you can use all of these symbols to enhance your apps, use them throughout whatever you're developing. So that's something they released just recently. That's available for everyone. Also Apple released vision OS beta four, and it also shows that users will be able to screen share that via airplay. So once vision OS is out with Apple vision pro, we'll be able to screen share that. And if we go to Apple on their vision pro website, you can see different visualizations of what it looks like. And it looks like these demos will be available to us to actually share with you. So we can airplay that and hopefully record that to share the overall experience once we can get our hands on them. So with them showing the experiences in the back background of what Apple vision pro looks like. Hopefully we'll be able to do the same thing as well. Now there's some new features in this update, as I mentioned with iOS 17.1 beta two, and the first thing has to do with books. If we go into books, if we go into read now, we know they renamed this from read now or reading now to read now they've updated the page to look a little nicer. So there's more information, better sort of layouts of top picks, what to read and everything else. So this is a really nice layout. Many people have seen the change here and it looks a little nicer than it did before. In iOS 17.1 beta two, if we go into the app store and we double tap on the search icon, we get right into the app store and then we can search for what we want and focus on what we're searching for. That doesn't work in iOS 17.0.3. So that's something they've added with 17.1. Also some people when they're in third party apps are actually seeing an album Album that's blank for photos for spatial photo albums. This is something we know is being added with iOS 17 later on that allows us to capture spatial photos and videos for the Apple vision pro. So when you take a photo, you'll have that option. It looks like it's built into the OS. It's just not activated yet. So that's something that will be coming a little bit later. Also in iOS 17.1 beta two, the haptics seem to be different. They seem to sort of vibrate for a longer period of time, or also just feel different in general, depending on what you're actually doing. So within sound and haptics under that, if you actually have haptics on to always play, you'll feel them a little bit different in this beta update. They may change that in the future, but it's something they haven't seemingly mentioned, but they have changed a little bit. Also iOS 17.1 beta two seems to fix the message searches on iPhone 15 models in iMessage. So if you're searching for something and it didn't work properly, that seems to be fixed. We also have more information about iOS 17.0.3 that things that Apple has actually resolved. It resolves an issue where Apple business essentials users were unable to complete setup after updating to iOS 17. So that's a bug fix. Why they didn't just tell us in the initial notes here, we're not sure but they haven't also iOS 17 devices no longer become unresponsive when joining a managed Wi-Fi network. And also the calendar app will no longer resend invitations to all participants after accepting or declining an exchange event invitation. Those things have been fixed in iOS 17.0.3. Now, many of those fixes along with the overheat fix should be in iOS 17.1 beta two. We'll talk about that more in just a moment. Also watch OS 10.1. If you didn't see my, my initial what's new video for iOS 17.1 beta two, watch OS 10.1 beta two has that double tap feature. So if we go into music, then maybe we go down to a song. We'll tap on this one. We'll play it on the iPhone. I'll turn it down here. We'll let it load. It's playing. If I double tap, it stops. So I feel it in my wrist with haptics, double tap. If we do it again, you'll see it starts to play. So it's something that's working now. It seems to work pretty well. It's not something I'll probably use regularly, but let me know if that's something you would use.
Also, additionally, in iOS 17.1 code, they mention Apple Pencil 3 with USB-C support. So maybe we'll have an Apple Pencil 3, maybe one for iPhone 15 or 15 Pros or next year's iPhones. We probably don't have support in this device, but at least we could charge it here and use it on our iPad. So maybe we'll see that when Apple introduces new iPads. Now, Apple may introduce new iPads this October. So we could see that this October with a new October Apple event, or maybe Apple will just send invitations for that. Also on the Mac, Apple updated a couple apps. This is pretty important, at least for me anyway. Apple updated iMovie and also Final Cut Pro. Final Cut Pro couldn't use the tracking plugin. So if maybe you want to put a graphic that's attached to something that's moving, the tracking plugins weren't working properly and they fixed that this week. So they fixed that along with a couple other bug fixes for iMovie as well. So that's something that's great that they finally resolved. I've been waiting on myself where I wasn't able to put that in videos. I actually put it in my iPhone 15 pro review as they resolve that issue. So you can see that when I show the cameras that it zooms in and they're all motion tracked. So that's something that's working properly again. Now also iPhone 15 pro max overheating issues. We'll talk more about this with some of your comments later, but iOS 17.0.3 seemed to fix it not only for the iPhone 15s, but I'm hearing more and more people say that it fixed it for their 14 pro and 14 pro max. So if you were seeing it sort of get hotter than you would expect, it seems to have fixed that issue. Also Instagram and other meta apps have been updated as well with those fixes. So people were experiencing issues with Instagram, WhatsApp, and more, those should have resolved the issue. So if we go to Instagram and you'll see two days ago, they released an update where it says bug fixes and performance improvements. So that's something that's been resolved with Instagram and definitely install that if you haven't already. Now, Apple stopped signing iOS 16.6.1, iOS 17, and iOS 17.0.1, meaning you can no longer downgrade your iPhone 14 down to iOS 16 any longer. Unfortunately, there's just no IPSW files and no way to downgrade to iOS 16.6.1, unfortunately. 16.7, maybe if you could find those files, but most likely you'll have to use iOS 17 from here on out. So that may be a bit disappointing for some people, but it looks like unfortunately you won't be able to downgrade. So if you're on iOS 16.7 and you're happy with it, maybe stay there for a little bit until iOS 17 resolves even more issues. iOS 17.0.4 could be the next release. However, we don't really know that for sure as Apple seems to be pushing out an awful lot of fixes lately. We have, we don't really have anything that's major. People have said they have green screens after updating to iOS 16. However, after doing a lot of research on that, it seems that phones that had the green screen issue, it may be hardware related. I haven't really seen any indication that it's software related, but let me know if you've experienced that and I'll look into it a little bit more and see if there's any difference there. But most of the things I've seen, seemed to be that it was hardware related and people got their screens replaced. I haven't really seen it myself. Now, as far as iOS 17.1 beta threes release, we can expect that as soon as Tuesday, it seems like Apple's on a fast track to get iOS 17.1 out and probably by the end of October, as they said, watch OS 10.1 would have features such as double tap and should be out in October, according to the website. So on watch OS's website or Apple watch series nine website, it actually says it will be out by then. And on the Apple watch series nine website, it actually says new gesture magic at your fingertips, double tap will Will be available in October. So it looks like we probably will have watch OS 10.1 and iOS 17.1 in October. And according to others online, they're already seeing analytics for iOS 17.4 in testing. So we should have 17.2, 17.3, of course, 17.4, just like we did last year. Apple pushes out these updates publicly with maybe new emoji and much more. Now, as far as overall camera improvements, I've recorded a few videos using the iPhone 15 cameras. I don't think they need much improvement. And unfortunately I don't expect any improvements with the iPhone 14 cameras. I think at this point they are what they are and you're not going to see much of a change. So if you were experiencing issues, maybe you think the photos or video or have too much HDR or sharpening or something like that, it doesn't seem like they're working on that any longer, but let me know if you've seen a difference. I don't really notice anything there at all. Now, as far as connectivity, iOS 17.1 beta two actually has been a little bit worse for me. However, on 17.0.3, I've had no issues whatsoever. So 17.1 beta two is basically back to what we had with my iPhone 14 pro max, where it drops in areas where it would typically drop with that. I see my Wi-Fi sometimes disconnect. 
I also see my cellular signal go away and then jump back and there's no explanation for it. So that's something I've seen only in beta two. It was great before that. So on the public versions, no problems, just this recent beta. Of course, I'll have to reply or report that in feedback rather. Now, as far as bug fixes, well, the heat issues resolved, like I said, and we'll actually test that in a little bit and I'll show you performance as well. Many people were concerned that performance would be affected with that iOS 17.0.3 update and it would affect things such as speed and everything else. It actually seems to be a little bit faster and I'll show you that with benchmarks as well, but haptics aren't working for some people in iOS 17.0.3. That's the only bug I'm really hearing about that where sometimes the haptics just don't work. It doesn't really vibrate. I've actually had issues with the beta more than 17.0.3. So on the beta, we actually have text tones that are still quiet. We still have that notification bug. So it sort of jumps a lot around. The notification bug is a little stuttery. That's something it's not too big of a deal, but it's an issue. Text tones are very quiet. We also occasionally have stutter and lag. It doesn't really necessarily pertain to the 15s or the 14s or anything else. It just seems to be everything. So if I play a song, it seems nice and fast then, but sometimes occasionally you'll swipe and it will be really slow and stuttery. Also, some people have reported that their AirPods sound different. I haven't noticed this at all, but some people have said they they're more flat and have less bass. Typically it takes an AirPods update for that, but it could be something in the equalizer built into the music app itself. So there could be some slight changes there. As far as the release notes, there hasn't been any difference there. We go into feedback here, we'll go into recent activity. There is a new 2023 autumn newsletter where Apple said they've fixed over a thousand issues from people reporting it. But in general, there's not a whole lot of changes here as far as resolved issues or known issues. They'll probably resolve these wallet issues very soon. And then with beta three, of course, we'll get closer to a more stable version. As far as performance, performance seems to be just what you would expect. It's nice and fast with the exception of those few stutters that I mentioned before. If you see the stutter show up, that's occasionally they'll show up, but going into things such as the camera, spinning around, snapping a photo, everything's nice and fast and just responds as you would expect. And that includes older phones as well, not just the latest phones. I've noticed good performance on the iPad, but in general performance seems to be exactly what you would expect. And I don't see it getting any worse, especially based off Geekbench scores. I'll show you in a moment. As far as the overall heat, well, it's staying nice and cool. And when I ran Geekbench scores earlier, it still was surprisingly cool. So now it's not really getting warm at all. Let me just show you these phones with a thermal camera here, just to give you an idea. And with the thermal camera, you'll see here that the phone at its hottest point is at about 88 degrees Fahrenheit or 88.5 degrees Fahrenheit. The 15 pro max is actually even cooler, but we haven't been using that a ton. That's at around 83 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, considering I was holding this in my hand and my hand is over 90 degrees Fahrenheit, according to this, it seems to be staying nice and cool and it's cool to the touch when you pick it up. Now, as far as the overall benchmarks, this has actually been pretty impressive. We gave it a few days to process everything in the background, index everything. And if we take a look at Geekbench six, We'll go into that here. You can see the scores for today. So on the left, I have iOS 17.0.3 and it's the highest score I've had. 2,959 for single core, 7,437 for multi-core. On the 15 Pro, we have 17.1 beta two with 2,909 for single core, 7,170 for multi-core. If we take a look at the previous results, you'll see the scores here. So the very top score is today, and then you can see the previous ones before. So they're actually doing quite well, especially the public release where there's nothing else running in the background. It seems to be very impressive as far as overall speed and definitely an improvement. So I wouldn't say Apple has throttled anything. It seems to be fast as far as performance and the heat seems to be right on point. It's going to get a little warm when charging, but nothing out of what Apple thinks is acceptable. No overheat messages or anything else. As far as battery life, it seems to be getting better. I still have some concerns as I think there's some issues here, but on my 15 pro that I've been using for a week and I just did a review on that, you'll see I'm at 100% battery capacity. You'll see we're at nine cycles. So that's pretty good considering I've been using it for a week. It seems to be getting, getting a little bit less just using it, but here's coconut battery to show you that as well on the different devices that I'm running. Now, as far as battery life, like I said, I have some concerns and the reason is I don't think the actual battery stats are accurate not at least lately anyway. So here you'll see, this was yesterday, 
before, this actually had a much higher number. So if we look at the day before, it says nine hours and 43 minutes of screen active time. And again, Safari's using 25% of my battery. But if you tap on this, it says it only used it for a minute on the screen. So it shouldn't be using that much power. And also the next day, you'll see I had four hours and 28 minutes of screen active time, but I used over 100% of the battery. I'm finding in reality, I'm getting about five to six hours of screen on time on the 15 pro. So I don't think this battery messaging or battery stats are really correct. I think they need to fix some things here as it just doesn't seem to be right based on what I'm seeing on this device and my other device as well. Now, if you're wondering if you should install iOS 17.1 beta two, I'd probably hold off at this point. I'd wait until maybe public beta three is out, or maybe we have some more features, unless you really want to try that new standby feature where you can just leave the display on all the time. I'm not seeing any burn in from that and I've been using it full time. So when it's on a stand next to my bed, charging at night, it actually is on all the time. And I've not seen any issues or ghosting with that. However, I would wait for the public beta more likely, maybe give it another beta or two, since we'll probably have it released within a month or so. However, I definitely would update to iOS 17.0.3 as that has security updates and fixes all those heating and performance issues people were having. So it seems like a pretty solid update so far. Now let's take a look at what some of you had to say. Radical Audio Design said iPhone 15 Pro Max 512 gigabyte in Finland, much better battery life overall runs better. My overheating came under regular phone calls and couldn't hold my phone. I believe it was much because of apps, but my Mini 2 or my Mini M2 with Sonoma is pretty unstable and glitchy since upgrading. Carlos Quiros Media, hopefully I'm saying that properly, I'm on iOS 17.0.3 and it fixed the overheating issue. I don't know if it's just me, but the phone feels snappier. Battery got a boost. It lasts the same, if not longer than my S23 Ultra. AJ56 said 17.0.3 on a 13 Pro Max. Ever since I switched from iOS 16, battery life has taken a hit, despite my phone being at the same 90% health for months. Also scrolling in notes is very rough, barely usable. M Robert 19897 said I'm running iOS 17.0.3 on the 15 Pro Max. I can't say nor speak to everyone else, but I never had any overheat issues since I got the phone on launch day. This is my first iPhone after being with Android for 14 years. I'm a heavy streamer and gamer, and I haven't experienced any issues during calls, charging, or any other heavy tasks. Same for me, but I know a lot of people had the issue. Yasync SE said issue with sound level in both beta one and beta two. The notifications and ping from apps are correct, but the output volume from Apple music or other apps with volume is lower. This can be compared with iOS 17.0.3 and the volume indicator. Daniel Lom said running it on iPhone 14 Pro Max and overheating issues went away, even have better battery life compared to the previous version. Arc Warden said running iOS 17.0.3 on 15 Pro Max. The heating issue I had was during calls, the phone was overheating like crazy after being on call for 10 to 15 only. After the recent update to 17.0.3, I can confidently say that the issue is solved for me. No overheating after that and battery issue or bug spotted. So that's everything with iOS 17.0.3 and iOS 17.1 beta two. I'm looking forward to the next beta. Hopefully we get that journal app finally, and maybe some more bug fixes and they fix those text tone issues. I've also had an issue where my phone actually doesn't set the alarm off in the morning when I actually have it set for a sleep alarm. So that's a bit of an issue for me. Let me know if you're having any other issues or if you found any other features, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.